welcome to Euro PCR 2025. I'm Nick Lorraine and it's my great pleasure to be here today with my good friend and colleague Dejan Milosinovic. Our topic today has been to discuss the fundamentals of an upfront two stent strategy in bifurcation PCI. So perhaps you'd like to share with us your thoughts with regard to when you would use an upfront two stent strategy. Yeah, I think that the crucial segment is deciding the importance of the side branch. So if the side branch is important, then we need to think about the treatment of the side branch. If the stenosis is significant and high grade, and in addition, if there is extensive disease, all those factors will favor treatment of the side branch. Now today we have actually three ways to treat the side branch. One is just using uh, a plain old balloon angioplasty, POBA. Two, it's to use a drug eluding balloon. And three is to use the second stent. So the question is, when is a second stent favored? And I would say it's in a large, clinically important side branch with a high degree stenosis and extensive disease, not a short, but extensive, more than 10 millimeters. I would have to ask you then, once you decide to treat the side branch as well, so you decide that you will need two stents, which technique would you use? What is the preferred one for you? So I think, like you say, there's a, the key is going to be the anatomy. We know that we've got two options. We can either go down a provisional strategy that ends up with two stents, or we can go down an upfront two stent strategy. So if I have a large side branch with a favorable option, a favorable angle where I have the option of put doing a culotte, that's a very nice strategy. Depending on my angle, I may do an inverted D, an inverted tap. In some cases, I might decide, actually, I want to start with an upfront DK crush. I'd be really interested to hear what your thoughts are and what cases do you think an upfront DK crush is really appropriate? Well, as you said, I mean, if there is a diameter that, can, that is large enough in the side branch and is similar to the main branch, then of course you can do culotte and you can start by stenting the side branch first. If you have a high degree significant stenosis, a sub-occlusion of the side branch, then you may need to treat that side branch first. Now, starting in the side branch, which is smaller in diameter than the main branch, would probably not allow for a good culotte. It would probably also not allow necessarily for a good top. And that is the case where I would need a DK crush. Uh, mostly in those cases where there is a high degree stenosis both in the main branch and in the side branch, where stenting either of the branches will jeopardize acutely the flow in the other branch, that I think is a good anatomical scenario for DK crush. We know that DK crush is used more in Asia, but it is also used in Europe and I personally use it in such situations. Why? Because by stenting one of the branches and having the balloon at the same time in the second branch, it makes it possible to have the flow uh, preserved in both branches at all times of the procedure. And DK crush will guarantee that, unlike uh, the provisional pathway where you would have a crossover stenting, thus stenting one branch but jeopardizing the other. So that's a clinical scenario where I think the DK crush, or that's an anatomical scenario where I think that the DK crush is very suitable. That being said, uh, putting two stents in a bifurcation is known to cause more events down the road than just a single stent. So how do you see the value of intracoronary imaging given that fact? So I really think um, a bifurcation where you're looking to do a two-stent technique or considering a two-stent technique is one of the scenarios where we must consider intracoronary imaging, whether we use OCT, whether we use IVIS. It depends on your own lab, your, your own abilities. I think we can evaluate very nicely the plaque, the plaque composition. We know how well we've prepared it. If we're doing a crossover, you just referred nicely to DK crush. It's very important in our DK crush that we cross adequately into the proximal cell. If we cross distally, we know we're going to displace our stent. If we look at, for example, the October trial, we can tell that using the OCT really helped experienced operators to ensure that they were crossing adequately and that they were getting a better outcome. So I really feel in my practice, a bifurcation where I'm considering a two stent technique is one of the key indications for intracoronary imaging. I'd be really interested to know what you do in daily life. 
when you say intracoronary imaging, to me, for bifurcations, the October trial was very, very important. My humble take from that trial was that one of the important points, whenever you treat the side branch, be it another stent or with a balloon just, like with the DCB, it's the place of rewiring. If you have abluminal rewiring into the side branch, then following it up with a balloon or even worse with the stent can cause distortion to the stent that is already implanted in the main branch. Now that distorted stent is associated with a great number of adverse events down the road. On angiography, you may not always appreciate stent distortion. And intracoronary imaging will tell you if you have a distorted architecture of the stent in a bifurcation PCI, which then you can correct at the end of the procedure. So intracoronary imaging, if you ask me in a word, mostly in bifurcations where it can really be specific to bifurcations is to detect abluminal wiring and prevent or correct stent distortion. Perfect. So I really enjoyed our conversation today. I think for me, we've picked up three key uh, messages. For a two stent strategy, we need to assess the importance of the side branch. We need to understand the anatomy to allow us to choose the correct technique. We need to use intracoronary imaging to ensure that when we do put in the second stent, if we're putting in the second stent, that we're doing it well. These patients we know we're placing at an increased risk of events down the line due to this additional uh, metal work. And we want to do, know that when we're doing it, we're doing it well and we're bringing the best possible clinical outcomes to our patients.